Hi, today I take a look at the Meridian Traveler, a compact semi-acoustic handpan. The Traveler is 18 inches in diameter, which is very small for a handpan, even smaller than a first generation Hang. The compact size makes it a convenient travel companion, but its more unusual feature is the internal amplification system. In the bottom side of the instrument you have an output jack, which connects to a small preamp box. From there you can connect directly to an amplifier if you play on the street or to the mixing desk and the PA system if you perform on stage. It allows you to amplify yourself without any feedback issues. And those feedback issues can be a big deal in sound checks and performances, especially in noisy environments or if you play with other amplified instruments. In some setups it's almost impossible to get enough volume out of a handpan with a normal microphone setup. Let's say you're located next to a drum set for example. The technology behind it is a customized contact microphone inside the instrument. Now contact mics have been around way longer than these. And there are a few models which are tailored specifically towards handpans. They come with their own set of issues. Usually they have quite a tinny sound. They tend to over accentuate the tone fields closest to them. And with every stroke of the instrument you get a really annoying thud sound. Like this. Some of these issues can be dealt with with some equalization. Let's see how all of this plays out for the Traveler. Do you remember the opening sequence? Did you like the sound? Do you think I recorded it with my studio mics? Or maybe with the internal system? Let's have another listen. But before we do that, let's check out how the Traveler fares as an acoustic instrument. Okay, now you hear the sound through my overhead microphones and let's check out the sound, sustain and tuning of the Traveler. Okay, I like what I'm hearing. The sound is nice and balanced and the instrument has a clear and beautiful sustain, partly due to the stainless steel body. On lower stainless steel instruments, the sustain can sometimes get a bit much for me and start to feel overwhelming once you play faster patterns. But not so much in this case. The tuning in general is very good, with one exception. The central note is a little low, roughly 10%. While small deviations are normal on handpans, this is definitely more than I would like. I have to say though, I didn't realize this before I checked with the tuner. The instrument still sounded nicely in tune to me. I checked with Duncan from Meridian about this. And he wrote that he was in a rush to ship me the instrument before leaving to India. And that usually he gives new instruments two more weeks to stabilize before doing the final tuning. Let's play some music and you can judge for yourself. Okay, nice. 
now that we have gotten out of the way that this is a beautiful sounding handpan, let's talk about the amplification system. If you have any recording experience, you probably realized that for the opening sequence I did use the sound of the contact microphone and that I did some sound processing as well. To give you a clear picture, I will go back to that same sequence and switch the sound between the overhead microphones, the dry signal of the internal microphone and the processed signal of the internal microphone. For a contact mic, this sounds really good. It gives you an even sound all around the instrument, and while it doesn't have the clarity of a studio microphone, I can see it working nicely in a band context, or mixed in with a microphone signal for additional volume, or just used for your monitoring signal to avoid feedback. The integrated solution gives you a few advantages over external contact mics. First, it gives you an even sound all around the instrument and doesn't over accentuate any of the tone fields. Then you don't have to deal with attaching it and having cables in inconvenient places. With external contact mics, if you touch the cable by accident, it creates very loud and disturbing noises in the signal chain. This can be a problem if you have the instrument on your lap and naturally move around a little bit. The integration into the body of the instrument solves these issues completely. Another application for the sound output is to send your signal straight into an effects unit or a looper. Since we don't have to worry about feedback, this can be done live and on stage as well. I prepared a track with drums and bass, so you can hear how the sound of the internal mic mixes in in a band context. And then I go through some different effects. Distortion anyone? Okay, so what do I think about the Traveler? Well, I think there's not much not to like about this compact, beautiful sounding instrument. The scale selection is limited to the higher registers. I think the lowest that is offered is E, but that's the price you pay for the compact size and to be expected. And if you use it as a traveling handpan, I mean, that's really not such a big deal. And I do quite like this concept of the smaller traveling companion handpan. I also really like the internal mic system. As a performing musician, it can make your life much easier. And it also brings new options to the table in regards to looping and sound design. For a contact mic system, it sounds really good and is way more convenient than adding one externally. Okay, that's it for today. Have a good practice and see you next week for a new tutorial video. 